a woman is not concerned with the worldly questions. The reason why a woman understands a messenger of truth better than any man can is because her mind, her being is filled with different questions. She is not thinking like man. She is closer to life. She is closer to earth. Man thinks like the way he does because something has been added to him. He has been smothered a lot more than a woman. The world clings to him more than a woman because what the world wants, man can provide better. Ambition, greed, desire to dominate, desire to control. The world can see the strength of man fit for all these endeavors. So it clings to man more. A woman by nature, her qualities, what she's looking for, what she's searching for, unless the world has that sensibility to connect with her, to understand her, it sees her as useless. That is why it is not a surprise that there has been great inequality in the way we treat men and women. The inequality is not existential. Nature did not intend in any way man to be superior than woman or a woman to be superior than man. They are simply different. But certain qualities in man the world sees as necessary, useful, and it clings to him. It clings so much that it replaces all his fundamental questions with it, its, its own questions. Man's mind is mostly social, mostly religious. A woman's mind is like a child's mind. A woman is mostly concerned with love. That is her only question. If she can understand love, she knows she can understand everything else. Because that is the language she understands. That is what she's longing for. She wants to connect with herself. She wants to connect with everything else. You can see that longing to connect in woman's desires, in the way she talks about herself, in the way she talks about the world around her. For her, it is not about becoming something. It is not about effort. It is not about achieving something. She wants to understand. Because she listens to the language of the heart more than the language of the mind. She is closer to her roots. A woman understands that life is mysterious. Life is not as it appears to be. There is something missing that she isn't understanding. Let me call that mysterious force love. I cannot directly see love. I cannot directly experience it. I cannot touch it, but I cannot deny it. My desire to be, my desire to produce, my desire to live, they're all wrapped in some kind of mysterious force. And this force is very close to me. It's not a stranger. 
Love is a word we use to describe that mysterious feeling of being one with everything. That moment when you are watching the clouds move in the sky, if anything is stirring inside you, if you're not looking at it as a mechanical painting, a moving painting, if you see it as anything more than a moving painting, it's because of love. The only reason we keep on missing love is because we are so much in it. We are seeing through love. We are swimming in love, but we don't know what it is. Just imagine, if you take away this mysterious force, what is life? What is movement? What is change? What is even the most beautiful of things? What is an ocean? If not for vast emptiness, ocean is a shade of blue. That's it. It is just the sky reflected a little differently. It's the same shimmering sky. But that's not how you look at the ocean. When you stand in front of the ocean, something is throbbing inside you. Something is wanting you to just jump into it and become one with it. Something wants you to scoop that whole ocean up and carry it with you. What is this mysterious force? What do you see when you see a bird flying in the sky? What do you hear when you listen to the sound of nature? Is it all mechanical? Are these just sounds and things that are just happening and you're simply watching it like in a museum? What is the difference between a museum and real life? You can go into a museum, admire beautiful, wonderful paintings, and just imagine those paintings to be animating, moving. But that's not how you experience life. You have deep connection with life. There's always something more that is happening. It's not always an experience of pleasure. There are moments when you are deeply in pain. By looking at just a simple movement of life, sometimes you are wondering. The whole range of emotions. Why should you experience life in such depth, in such intensity? If not for the existence of something mysterious, something you don't understand that you are a part of. It is a part of you. And everything is a part of that. Now that mysterious entity is love. Who better to talk about love than the one who has become love? When we talk about the ultimate nature of reality, all the words that we use to describe it, more than describing it, it simply talks about one quality of it. So when you talk about the ultimate nature of reality as consciousness, consciousness is just one quality of that ultimate truth. Beauty is a quality. Being awake is a quality. Love is a quality. But in reality, nobody can actually talk about that thing. When you are looking at it as love, it is nothing but love. When you're looking at it as consciousness, it is nothing but consciousness. When you're looking at it as truth, it is nothing but truth. When you're looking at it as your own self, it is nothing but your own self. In that moment, you can connect with it in your own way, using your own words, and it will make perfect sense. But in the next moment, you can connect with it in a totally different way. 
and there are endless ways of describing the nature of reality. We simply identify it with the qualities that we can recognize. Truth, beauty, and bliss. Qualities that we know how to recognize. We know it is truth because it is unchanging, it's unmoving. It has always been there, it's going to always be there. That's the truth. It is beauty because nothing can be as perfect as consciousness. Nothing can be as perfect as reality. And what is beauty if not for ultimate perfection? A flower is beautiful because it is perfect. You take away two or three petals, it might not look that beautiful. What changed? Just a little bit of that perfection has been disturbed. If beauty is perfection, then the ultimate truth has to be the most beautiful thing. And it is consciousness because if that is the only thing existing, if it did not allow you to contemplate on it, then there is no way for you to even think about it. So it has to be fully alive, fully conscious. All the qualities that we can recognize. But when you are with that oneness, you will see that you can describe it in as many ways as you can. One way in which your heart connects to that nature of reality is through love. Thank you.